Good morning, y'all. Uh, my name is Stephen Garcia. I'm the coordinator of community education over at Women's Protective Services. And my story today is about one of my one of the first clients I had, not the first one, but one of the first ones I had at Women's Protective Services. It was back in 2001. I was a newbie, I was a rookie, and this person, Dana, called the shelter. Dana needed legal help. Dana needed help with filing charges, needing help getting a restraining order, all sorts of different legal stuff. And that was my job. So I met with Dana, and Dana didn't quite look like your typical victim, and I'll tell you why after a while. Um, Dana came to me and described how this abusive relationship had escalated. It started off with put downs and shouting and yelling and throwing stuff and went to hitting, throwing things, getting injured, that kind of stuff. And, and, and Dana was scared to call the police because Dana had been threatened by the abuser that there would be some bad consequences if the police were called. So fast forward a couple of months, Dana and the abuser are driving down the highway and they get into an argument and the abuser breaks Dana's nose. And so Dana has to pull over and get on the cell phone and call law enforcement. And luckily law enforcement responded in force. There were like five different law enforcement agencies that showed up, you know? And so um, they arrested Dana's abuser. And believe it or not, this is hard to believe, Dana's abuser had a criminal history of doing this in the past. So they told Dana there would be a 48 hour hold. Once they make bail, we'll contact you, let you know when this person's gonna be released, give you a heads up. Well, that didn't happen. So Dana's at home enjoying, enjoying a nice quiet evening. And then here's all sort of ruckus stuff breaking outside. Dana goes out and looks through the window and there's the abuser with the baseball bat breaking the both side windows of the pickup truck and working on busting up the windshield. Dana's abuser looks and sees Dana looking through the window, heads to the door and starts busting down the screen door. Now at this point, Dana's like, I've got to call police. They didn't tell me I've got to call them. Luckily, don't fret, everything's cool. <laughs> Luckily the police do arrive before the abuser can make their way into the home, arrested again. Now, the interesting point to this is, the reason why it sticks out in my mind, even back from 2001, is that um, Dana was my first male victim. Dana is a six foot one, 220 pound male, and Dana's abuser is 5'3", 130. And so it made me realize at that point what domestic violence is all about. It is not, even though our name is Women's Protective Services, it is about helping those in need being abused in their relationship. And so um, now the, the segue is over to United Way. That's what we're all about, United Way. This is one story of 23 different stories that you could have heard, each one of them compelling in their own sense, each agency deserving of your hard-earned money. But the thing I want to emphasize is that, especially during these times with this pandemic stuff going on, and we're being stretched in, and people are needing help more now more than ever, right? And so that's why I'm going to ask you to contribute to the community fund. That way, United Way can get it to where it's going. There may there may be a, a greater need for something over here than over here. Now, if you want to give it to BPS, I am not going to argue with that. But there are 22 other agencies just as deserving. So let United Way distribute your hard earned money to the community fund and see, and, and this is, there's a hope. We need to have hope during this time to really get through this pandemic, to, to get back to what's normal. And there may be a new normal, but hope is gonna start right here with you. So thank you very much, appreciate it.